Hello and welcome to Day 14 of Women in Antiquity. And today we're going to be talking about gender in the Hellenistic and Greco-Roman eras of the ancient world. So what do we mean by Hellenistic? Um, the story of the Greeks uh, begins with the, the Mycenaeans in the Bronze Age. Uh, and after the cataclysm of the collapse of the Dark Age, uh, begins again um, with the uh, um, the Greeks of the uh, uh, that reform their culture in the Dark Age and and burst forth onto the uh, onto the uh, uh, on, onto history in the Archaic Era and, uh, and 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 climax in in a ferment of culture uh, and and expression in the Classical Era. Uh, the classical era comes to an end um, when uh, all of this fervent expression comes to war between the Greeks in the Peloponnesian War, a war that is fundamentally about uh, the Greek identity, about uh, the Greek idea, about uh, um, uh, uh, versions of the vision of Greek achievement and 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 the and ideal society, ideal civilization that are so at odds with each other that they cannot be reconciled. That their presence uh, um, uh, uh, seems to endanger those who follow the opposing path. Uh, and uh, this war, um, in many ways, tears down the Greek world. Uh, the Peloponnesian War lasts for an extremely long time in an era where uh, wars would often last only for a single campaign season. Uh, uh, and uh, it, uh, it fundamentally exhausts disillusions and, and breaks um, the, uh, the, the spirits of the participants, which comes to be uh, the entire uh, Greek world of the Aegean. Um, the, uh, both Sparta and Athens uh, claim uh, the, uh, the peoples of, of the Greek world to their side, one side or the other. And uh, the, uh, the period leading up to the Peloponnesian War is one of, of cold war, of, of one of, of extreme polarization between the allies of Athens and the allies of Sparta, each of whom mistrusts the other uh, and uh, the other's vision for uh, what it means to be Greek. Um, and uh, uh, the other outcome of this war is, is um, an acceptance of the idea that, uh, that one of the cities of the Greek world should uh, be um, its its leader, its hegemon, its its dominant cultural force, and uh, um, and so even after the Peloponnesian War is finally concluded, uh, after much uh, um, calamity and and uh, uh, and, uh, and sorrow, uh, the uh, the Spartans defeat the Athenians. Uh, even after this, the 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 Greeks are already uh, um, the Greeks are already worn out, and uh, in many ways, um, uh, uh, in any many ways, reduced in their um, in their ambition, uh, in their sense of self capacity, as well as in their actual resources. Uh, um, but more than this, uh, they can the the Greeks continue to fight over the idea of who should be, uh, what city should be the dominant power in the Greek world. And, uh, you know, the rest of the Greek capacity becomes uh, consumed and frittered away in these wars between Corinth, Sparta, Athens, and Thebes uh, in the years following the Peloponnesian War um, in, the, uh, um, in, the, uh, in the third century. Um, uh, um, I'm sorry, in the in the fourth century, and so um, in the years following the Peloponnesian War in the fourth century, and so uh, uh, Greece is left open to the um, intrusion of Macedon, a uh, a heavily Greek influenced but barbarian land to the north, ruled over by an extremely capable uh, and uh, and ambitious king uh, named Philip. When Philip is uh, is assassinated, he has already gained dominion over the Greek world and the Aegean for the most part, uh, and uh, the um, and the rule that he leaves to his son Alexander um, is one of, of of great promise for achievement by Macedon um, with uh, the intent of 
of um, of um, uh, taking up where the Greeks had left off, uh, where the the Greeks are no longer to, able to carry their own torch. Um, uh, Alexander, the uh, the most Hellenophile of of any non Greek ruler of this era, uh, uh, Alexander is raised uh, to to uh, to think. Um, in Greek ways, and uh, and to um, uh, and to hold dear, um, you know, Greek ideals, and to uh, and to be dedicated to, to be driven by uh, the uh, the ideas of Greek progress. His tutor is Aristotle. Uh, and uh, he he takes to the whole Greek idea with with um, with uh, with extreme uh, um, with extreme love for what can be accomplished and with a with a extremely broad uh, um, sense of of how the the Greeks have achieved what other civilizations cannot. Um, but as a non-Greek, he is also able to see that there are other great civilizations older than the Greeks, uh, and that the ultimate civilization might just be the synthesis of um, of of Greek culture and society and, and expression with the the heritage of the older civilizations of Mesopotamia and Egypt. Uh, and so uh, Alexander undertakes his uh, uh, conquest of the East in a spirit not merely of, of political ambition, but uh, of, of cultural ambition, of seeking to uh, attain uh, that which is, uh, uh, um, would be dear to the hearts of the Greeks in many ways, the achievement of the ultimate civilization, but uh, uh, in a form that is is the the merger of the greatest civilization of um, the western end of the civilized world at the time, which is to say uh, the Aegean, the Greeks, and the greatest uh, achievements uh, of the east. What would come from the, the union of that would be the ultimate society. And the, the most interesting thing about this is that Alexander essentially achieves this goal in many ways. Uh, even though he, uh, you know, dies young and his empire becomes, instead of one great empire ruled over by Alexander as king of Asia with a throne in Babylon, it becomes, uh, you know, broken into... Uh, um, uh, uh, smaller empires. The lands that Alexander conquers, the lands that he rules over from Greece uh, to India and from Bactria to Egypt are lands that have been joined together to, with a, a common purpose of, uh, uh, of, of, of the, the, uh, the synthesis of, of, of the Greek uh, with the Eastern, with the um, with the uh, the Hellenization and the creation of a a Hellenistic culture ruled over by Macedonians uh, in emulation of the Greeks, and uh, and so these these lands of the East have in common uh, a shared second language, if not first language, of Greek. Um, the, uh, the the construction of new cities is is on the the model of Greek cities, uh, and uh, in many cases older cities are refurbished along Greek lines. Uh, libraries and uh, and academies are built, and um, uh, um, and the fostering of of learning and expression of philosophy and science and poetry, and theater, and uh, literature, and history, uh, all of the, the expressions of, of, the, um, of, the, uh, of the Greek world, uh, all of the manifestations of the Greek idea of, of arete through the, um, through, the, um, through the fomenting of new, new knowledge and new ideas. Uh, all of these things become part of the, the 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 nature of the societies of the East, 
And so as a result, we have, even though, a, you know, partly in a political sense, because they're ruled over by the, uh, the generation of, uh, of uh, Macedonians that come after Alexander, his, uh, uh, his, his, his uh, you, know, you know, most noble generals and so forth, in particular Seleucus, uh, Antigonus, and Ptolemy, um, and uh, the uh, the result of this is uh, the Seleucid Empire, the the Great Yellow Area, which includes um, most of what was originally the Persian Empire, uh, the Ptolemaic Empire, which is Egypt and Libya and Nubia and so forth, um, and uh, the the Macedonian um, uh, uh, heartland, which includes uh, um, which includes the lands of the Greeks. Uh, um, these uh, these lands are you know politically Hellenistic in the sense that they're ruled over by Macedonians and remain so for many generations. Um, so that uh, you know Egypt, for example, is ruled over by you know Macedonians, uh, uh, you know ruling uh, according to a Greek model uh, from the days of Alexander in in the uh, in the three uh, thirties all the way down to 300 years later when the last of the Macedonian Greek pharaohs of Egypt, Cleopatra, is, um, is the last king of Egypt before it is absorbed into the Roman Empire. Uh, so in a political sense, yes, uh, but also in a cultural sense, all of these lands are, uh, are the Hellenistic East, culturally, socially, uh, and, uh, and and artistically, and and so there's and economically as well. All of these lands are are interconnected, uh, and increasingly so as the benefits of the exchange of ideas not only within a community but beyond communities and uh, uh, becomes apparent. Uh, the 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 um, the benefits in in standard of living of of traffic, in 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 goods. And, uh, and services and skills throughout these lands uh, it increases as people become more and more aware that, uh, that they are um, no longer confined to their immediate vicinity, that their outlook stretches beyond the, the walls of their own city, that they are part of a larger world. And this is, uh, this is uh, eye-opening and encouraging in, in many ways in terms of the, the fostering of, of economic uh, progress and expansion, uh, as well as, um, as, well as uh, social stability and um, uh, ac uh, agricultural development, uh, increasing of standard of living, uh, uh, increasing of, of population, uh, increasing of, of birth rates. Um, the, the result of the Hellenistic East is uh, is a sense of of there being an interconnectedness and a, and a cosmopolitanness that uh, that had uh, that was uh, was was an innovation in the ancient world. Um, in many ways, the ancient world is about the invention of civilization and uh, its extension, the uh, the development and experimentation in ideas of empire. Uh, the control of distant resources by uh, a, 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 an increasingly powerful economic entity. Uh, uh, and uh, the development of the, the Hellenistic East is sort of a, uh, an evolution beyond uh, uh, the ideas of first civilization uh, and then empire, because the Hellenistic East creates a, a meta-level of, uh, of, of cultural interaction, social interaction, economic interaction that is beyond uh, the, the borders of political identity. Uh, and, and, and connecting all of this together is, is what is inherited of, of the Greek that is, uh, that is spread by Alexander and that is, uh, that is infused into the existing cultures of uh, the Eastern uh, ancient world. Uh, the the uh, uh, many of uh, the of the most striking examples of 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 artistic expression that come out of the ancient world are actually from the Hellenistic era. 
uh, and uh, and represents the a, a advancements on even what was achieved during uh, the 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 heights of classical Athens. Uh, what we're looking at here is a is a very famous piece uh, that is called Laocoon and his sons. Uh, this is uh, this is representing a moment from the story of the Trojan Horse in which a um, uh, the Trojans, uh, you know, are uh, have uh, are about to take the Trojan horse into the city, uh, you know, with the idea that they need to do so in order to make sure that the gods are not angry. The horse has been dedicated uh, uh, to a particular goddess and must be moved within the city in order to prevent that goddess from being angry. Uh, and uh, but in order to bring it into the city, they must remove the lintel over the gates because the horse was deliberately constructed too large to fit underneath it. And uh, Laokuan comes to the people as as they are, are preparing to do this, and uh, and and yells at them because he knows that everyone knows that there is a prophecy that when the lintel is removed from over the gates of Troy, Troy will fall. That there is that there is a very specific prophecy that that foretells the the doom of Troy should they do what they are now just about to do. Uh, but the, the superstition of the Trojans and the fact that the Greeks appear to be gone uh, leads them to believe that, that they must do this in order to complete the, uh, the events of the war and, and, and bring all of the suffering of the Trojan War to an end uh, through the appeasement of the gods. And uh, uh, there is a moment in the argument where Laocoon seems to be making headway and convincing some of the Trojans uh, that they must uh, think again, that they must uh, examine this horse more closely to see what lays be in, lays within it, uh, uh, to um, to understand why it was constructed at such a massive size. Uh, uh, there's one version of the story in which he even, uh, you know. Um, is supposed to have uh, thrown a spear uh, at the uh, at the side of the Trojan horse, and uh, the you know uh, elicited from within the moaning of the concealed Greeks. Um, uh, and uh, at the moment when he is just about to convince the Trojans, uh, a number of serpents boil up out of the sea uh, and attack Laocoon and his sons and kill them. Uh, and uh, the the Trojans take this as an omen that uh, Laocoon, um, you know, must be Laocoon's arguments must be rejected, and they must bring the Trojan horse within the city. Uh, one of the things that's uh, that's you know that's striking about this legend is that uh, the Trojans are forewarned about the disastrous nature of of bringing the Trojan horse within the city um, by two people, Laocoon being one. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, Cassandra being the other, uh, Cassandra being gifted with uh, with prophecy knows that uh, the Trojan horse is uh, is is uh, uh, a is the instrument by which Troy will be destroyed. Uh, but uh, you know, so uh, you know, we have a, a situation where. Um, uh, both a, a male figure and a female figure uh, tell the truth but are cast aside for reasons that have to do with the ways in which uh, uh, mortals can be abused by the gods. So the serpents obviously were sent by the, uh, uh, by the gods that are allied with the, uh, with the Greeks. Uh, and so a, a good and honest man who is using the power of his rational mind is is undone by the fickleness and, and, and partisanship of of the gods. It is a lesson not lost on the Greeks that uh, that uh, the reason and the, the capacity of humans for reason is undone not only by emotions like uh, like pride and uh, and hubris uh, uh, and greed and uh, and so forth. Uh, but also by uh, by the the uh, capriciousness of the gods, and so the 
in, in such a way, that, you know, that, uh, that, you know, Homer being the foundation for the Greeks' understanding of the, of, of the world in many ways, uh, there is built into, you know, very many, many elements of the story of the Trojan War, the Iliad and the Odyssey, the understanding that, uh, that, um, that the, um, that the wisdom of humans is often opposed by the irrationality of the gods. Uh, and that uh, that uh, um, if there is some way to to seek greater wisdom uh, and to pursue reason and rational thought, it, it 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 is deep. It is to be done with the power of the human mind, not seeking uh, the revelation of the divine. Uh, philosophy and science take their path through the um, through the physical world through uh, the the power of the of reason and avoid at all costs uh, becoming entangled in uh, the devices of the gods and cassandra is is uh, is undone by the gods as well because cassandra ha- was strong enough to reject uh, the advances of apollo uh, and in return um, her gift of prophecy was turned into a curse of a prophet whose words would never be believed. And so Cassandra nonetheless remains, as we've discussed before, as a, as a figure of, uh, 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 that is, uh, you know, uh, uh, both admirability in woman and uh, the, the price that uh, women in particular are forced to pay through, the, uh, um, through being subjected to uh, the behavior of, of males. So in any way, what I really wanted to, to, to say about this is uh, the, the, um, this, this piece was, um, was uh, made during the Hellenistic era, during the, the second or first century BCE, uh, and uh, for uh, a long time was um, was a, was a well known work of art. It was uh, described by contemporary authors, uh, and then it vanished. And it uh, was rediscovered fifteen hundred years later. In appropriately enough, uh, uh, the era of the Renaissance, when uh, when the people of of the of Europe and the Mediterranean world in particular uh, began to look back over the the Middle Ages to antiquity and uh, the the thinking of the ancients, and immediately on its on its rediscovery, it was it was recognized as being an exquisite example of of artistic expression, the um, the the anguish of of uh, of, of Lao Kuan's uh, face. Um, the uh, the malice of the the, the snakes uh, uh, and uh, the, uh, the 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 detail that's put into the uh, the physicality not just the articulation of, of muscle and bone but uh, the the sheer fluidity of motion in marble uh, and uh, all of these things are 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 are, are elements of the uh, the advancement of artistic expression during the during the uh, Hellenistic era, uh, and uh, there are a number of of famous works of art that uh, you know that depict not only the male form but the female form. Um, one of the most famous of these is the uh, the the um, the Nike of Samothrace. Uh, known as uh, Nike is the is the Greek goddess of victory, and uh, so this is this is also known in English as as the winged victory, and is the model for you know many uh, many other kinds of of art to come, and so you know we can see you know this is another example of of the the lavish uh, detail. That is uh, that is uh, um, indulged in by uh, by Hellenistic artists, uh, but this is done uh, not in the service of, of creating something that is uh, a stiff and intricate, but you know this detail is is uh, somehow in the service of 
of of you know lush flesh and and uh, a sense of of organic um, again fluidity and motion uh, and uh, there is a uh, there is a carnal element as well the uh, the the representation of the uh, of the uh, of the the, uh, the 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 Nike here is not simply meant to be a a cold and austere uh, um, you know uh, conjuring of a a you know of a godly form it is it is meant to be a, an expression of of the the feminine ideal in in a uh, in a way that. Uh, is 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 so lifelike is beyond the 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 uh, uh, the the, uh, the lifeliness of of classical figures and uh, in this way we can get a sense as with Laocoon the uh, the development of the Greek sense of the the ideal male form uh, here we see an, a, an expression of the uh, of the ideal female form in 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 the in the, in the, uh, in the um, level to which it has progressed in the Hellenic Sigura, uh, and uh, you know, as with the the male, it is one of of both strength and beauty. Um, and there is a, there is power and potency uh, uh, in in these forms and. You know the the capacity for the carnal is not uh, one of of um, demureness, but uh, you know, but one of of uh, you know uh, of of partnership. The um, the the indulgence and and uh, pursuit of learning is it begins with Alexander himself. Uh, he found uh, many cities uh, during his. Uh, Im uh, imperialistic expansion during his conquests of the Persian Empire and uh, the lands beyond, uh, and many of these he calls Alexandria, and uh, many of these he makes centers of learning and culture. He, you know, at the heart of these uh, uh, of these cities are are not only temples and homes of the gods, but uh, uh, you know, temples of learning, libraries. Uh, and uh, and and uh, and academies, and the greatest of these, of course, is the Library of Alexandria. Uh, this is a representation of, of um, you know, what would have been one of many many rooms in the in the Alexandrian Library, uh, with uh, you know the a, a librarian here looking through the uh, the scrolls um, that are uh, the the normal form of the recording of knowledge in uh, the, the Hellenistic East. Uh, these would have been papyrus scrolls, um, uh, papyrus being the most readily available, uh, you know, material for the creation of writing surfaces. Uh, and normally, so they would be, uh, they would be rolled up uh, sometimes, you know, more than one work, or if they're very short, or sometimes one work would take a number of scrolls, and they would be filed, uh, as you see, you know, with the with the butt end facing out and a tag indicating what the contents are. Uh, the Library of Alexandria, you know, quickly becomes uh, uh, the the greatest library in the world, and and this is an element of its its deliberate. Construction and its deliberate uh, dedication to the idea of of growth of its own growth of the expansion and accumulation of knowledge and the idea that accumulation of knowledge is not merely to uh, to to you know put it in in uh, in in pretty boxes and and to store it away and protect it but uh, to for it to be. Uh, uh, shared amongst scholars and to be grown by uh, by accretions uh, by the additions of, of works of, of, of scholars. Um, it's also no notable that uh, that uh, some of the most uh, um, uh, um, pragmatic expressions of of philosophy. Are developed during this time as 
uh, 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 the philosophers of the Hellenistic era are attempting to grapple with uh, not merely the ultimate nature of truth, like Socrates and Plato, but with the, the fundamental idea of, of how we, as, you know, um, as animal-like forms uh, that, uh, that take pleasure in, um, in, in, in sensual things, uh, can uh, achieve great things through the embrace of reason. Uh, the, the duality of, of our nature as being both, uh, um, as being both uh, fleshly and cerebral is, uh, is, uh, uh, is, is uh, one of the chief concerns uh, of this era as, as in the Hellenistic world creates a, a world of, of unprecedented uh, comforts in some ways and in some places. Uh, the, uh, the, the nature of this uh, and, and the seeming dissonance between you know, the pleasures of the flesh and the um, the the uh, the the um, the remove at which ultimate truth lies. Uh, how that is reconciled is is the work of philosophers. And so we see the um, the development of uh, uh, key philosophical ideas that are fundamentally about how do we live in this material world and still pursue. Uh, the ultimate form of of humans, the ideal form of humans, and the ideal form of um, of society. Uh, it's not merely enough to strive to um, to achieve for oneself and for one's community, uh, according to the original Greek idea, uh, because that can that can bring about plenty, but it might not necessarily bring about the ideal. And so we have uh, uh, Zeno of Kittium, who develops uh, uh, Stoicism, uh, um, uh, Epicureanism, Cynicism, Skepticism. All of these are, are different ways of, 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 um, of trying to understand the human condition. Uh, the, uh, the the nature of the interconnectedness of these cultures is somewhat symbolized by what uh, much later became the key to deciphering the hieroglyphics of, of ancient Egypt, the Rosetta Stone. The Rosetta Stone is a uh, is a very large inscription on which uh, a a set of edicts is transcribed first in Egyptian hieroglyphics uh, and then in the um, you know the more everyday script uh, uh, and dialect known as Coptic and then finally at the bottom in Greek and so by this means uh, the uh, the pathway to deciphering hieroglyphics the secret of hieroglyphics which had been lost uh, for uh, for nearly two thousand years was recovered um, in the uh, in the modern era, but the Rosetta Stone is also representative of the cosmopolitan nature, uh, even of you know of the most ancient communities, even of places that uh, you know that that had uh, taken comfort in their their isolation. Uh, you know, the Egyptians had never particularly wanted to be all of that, all that connected to the outside world. But uh, the uh, the Rosetta Stone is an example, one of many, of the extent to which you know uh, uh, Egypt itself was a uh, a heterogeneous place in the Hellenistic era, uh, a place where uh, you know where Greeks. Uh, and, and Macedonians and uh, uh, and Jews and Egyptians and Babylonians and uh, 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 and Persians uh, lived uh, side by side and participated in the same uh, uh, culture. Um, and uh, you know, there's a certain um, there's a certain element to which we can, you know, in a limited way, 
say that uh, that there is a slightly different sense of the of, of gender roles in the Hellenistic East, in that uh, there are you know in 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 the New Kingdom in the the um, the the height of Bronze Age Egypt, there is one great female king Hatshepsut, uh, and a couple of um, of noble women that uh, gained a name for themselves through uh, through accumulated influence and activity, most notably Nefertiti. Uh, but uh, in the Hellenistic era, we have a number of cases of uh, princesses and queens that are uh, either you know direct rulers or co-rulers that have um, that have, that stand you know side by side with the the the, the male rulers uh, as the the uh, the monarchs of Egypt. Um, you know, there's only a certain extent to which you can you know you can only take this so far. But you know, the Cleopatra, the the last uh, of the pharaohs, is Cleopatra the seventh, um, and uh, she is. Uh, uh, you know, she is, you know, Pharaoh of Egypt, um, you know, without dispute. And, you know, she is, you know, a descendant of, of Macedonian Greeks, and yet uh, she is, you know, this is her homeland. You know, after 300 years, this is, you know, this is her land and her people and her nation. And uh, Cleopatra is a great example of, of doing everything necessary to protect your nation. Uh, you know, and so uh, the, the story of Cleopatra is, is one that is, is often taken in, in different ways, depending on who's telling the story. You know, some you know, might say that uh, Cleopatra, uh, you know, uses her feminine wiles in order to gain the pleasure of a man, because that's what women have to do, and so, you know, you know, women are you know put at a disadvantage from the beginning and must use sexuality in order to gain any kind of power at all. The power is still held uh, by the the individual uh, with the uh, with the male equipment. Uh, in you know, in this case, uh, first Julius Caesar, and then you know Mark Antony. Um, both of whom have uh, extended relationships with uh, with uh, with Cleopatra, and uh, Cleopatra bears their children. Uh, but uh, you know, f you know, for me, Cleopatra is is a more complicated story. Cleopatra is um, is uh, uh, you know, as king uh, or queen, as pharaoh. Cleopatra is able to protect Egypt from the dominion of Rome, where all of the other kings around the Mediterranean failed. Uh, you know, Egypt has a you know a, an inherent agricultural power, but uh, you know it was not strong militarily. Uh, uh, it's uh, you know not not compared to the the Roman legions by the time of Julius Caesar. Uh, and yet uh, Cleopatra is able to hold uh, Egypt as the, the, the last remaining independent kingdom of the entire uh, Mediterranean coastline. Uh, everything else falls to the Romans. And, uh, you know, only when, uh, only when uh, uh, Rome itself is, is fully under the control of, of one individual and and all of the other warlords have been defeated, uh, including Mark Antony, uh, and uh, and Octavian, the last warlord standing, is able to bend all of the resources of the Roman Empire to the submission of Egypt. Uh, only then uh, does Cleopatra uh, um, uh, accede. To the uh, the dictates of Roman dominion, and even then, she is able to uh, assert herself one last time. Uh, if uh, if she were captured, she would have been brought to Rome in chains, 
and she would have been a part of Octavian's triumphal parade. She would have been led through the city to the, the jeering and chastisement and, and, uh, and celebration of, of the, the entire population of Rome uh, as the triumph wound through the city uh, uh, to its ultimate destination of, of, the, um, of the, the temple of, of Jupiter, Optimus Maximus. Uh, she would have been subjected to humiliation and would, it would have been representative of the humiliation of Egypt. Uh, her act of defiance in, in killing herself uh, using poisonous asps uh, is, is a gesture not only of her own personal defiance, but also robbing the Romans of uh, being able to celebrate complete dominion over Egypt. They're, this act of defiance uh, on her behalf is representative of the act uh, of, the, of the extent to which Egypt is still capable of defying Rome, um, that the Roman victory is not total and, and perfect. Uh, and, um, you know, and so, you know, Cleopatra is... is, is you know, maybe remembered by some for all the wrong reasons, but uh, uh, you know she is she is the one ruler that was able, even in death, uh, to uh, convey to the Romans that their power was not absolute. Uh, so the readings. Uh, so the, uh, uh, the the Pomeroy chapter for today. Is is largely uh, concerned with the um, the way in which uh, things change somewhat for women in the Hellenistic East, and uh, you know I move it forward to this time because it's the Hellenistic East that the Romans encounter when they turn their attention to the East. Up until the year two hundred BCE, the Romans are concerned with the West. Uh, it's not until uh, uh, two hundred two. BCE that the that the Romans finally and utterly defeat the Carthaginians, and so the uh, it is only you know at this time uh, as the the war against Hannibal and the defeat of Carthage is is taking place that the Romans are able and even interested in turning their attention to the east uh, and the east that they see there is. Uh, the the world that is that has coalesced around this uh, this Hellenistic synthesis and has had a chance to do so for you know 130 years already, uh, so that by the time Roman uh, you know influence and uh, increasing prominence and uh, in places dominion is starting to take place over the next several decades, uh, mainly at first through the uh, the defeat of the, the great Eastern empires, the Seleucid Empire, the Macedonian Empire, in the name of, uh, in the name of, of you know, liberty for the peoples that they rule over. Um, you know, the, the East that they face is one that is, is, is this, uh, you know, this, this, uh, this cosmopolitan world created... Uh, uh, through the uh, introduction of, of the Greek idea into um, into Macedonia, into Mesopotamia, uh, uh, and uh, Canaan and Egypt, and uh, so the result is that the the Greco-Roman world that results from the uh, the combination of of the Roman world and the Hellenistic world um, is is one that is the product of this combination already. It is, you know, the Romans, uh, you know, uh, admire and embrace uh, Greek things on the abstract level, even if they don't think that much of the Greeks themselves. And so, you know, the, the world, the, the Greco-Roman civilization that results from the Roman acquisition of the Hellenistic East, that is the foundation for what we call Western civilization, uh, is, is, uh, the, is the result of this Hellenistic uh, fomenting. And uh, this Hellenistic fomenting of the East is one that uh, changes some things in terms of gender. Uh, you know, for one thing, you know, it, it helps to unify things 
through you know increased commerce in in goods and ideas, increased migration, uh, there's a, a certain amount of homogenation of some kinds of social expectations and structures. Uh, you know, fundamentally, each uh, each place in the Hellenistic East still holds on to its roots uh, and uh, and its traditions, but uh, they are also connected with each other. Um, you know, by what they share in this, in this uh, new, you know, sort of metaculture. And so, you know, this means that, uh, that ideas of, of uh, you know, what is appropriate for women uh, it become uh, sort of averaged out. Uh, you know, if, uh, if a city is going to be sophisticated and worldly, its inhabitants are as well. And so, uh, you know, so what this means is that uh, is that local ideas of gender become uh, uh, become uh, connected in sort of you know a larger you know extensive ideas of gender, and uh, the idiosync idiosyncrasies of things like you know the you know the Athenian ideal of seclusion and this kind of thing, uh, idiosyncrasies that are very local. Uh, you know, ebb away, or you know, rounded off, and 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 fade somewhat in the face of this larger cosmopolitan idea. Uh, the uh, the Plutarch is is an interesting um, is an interesting document. It contains a uh, a lots of different kinds of advice for a young man and woman who are starting out uh, with their marriage bond, and fundamentally, this carries over the same. You know, general sense of, of marriage being a partnership with mutual responsibility for the household, uh, and these kinds of things that we have seen, you know, all the way through, uh, you know, in in Homer and and uh, uh, and so forth and so on. Um, uh, Plutarch uh, works from a, a example and counterexample, and so this tends to be very anecdotal and. Uh, in some ways, you know, kind of, um, you know, scattered because, you know, these, you know, the, the topics that crop up are not necessarily, not necessarily part of, you know, a larger theme, but more, you know, expressions of, you know, uh, various different aspects of, of married life. And so you see both the idea of, of lifelong partnership, you know, and, you know, uh, uh, the household is carried on by both, uh, you know, parties in agreement, and you also have things like a wife ought not to take uh, friends of her own, but to enjoy her husband's friends in common with him, uh, you know, and and so forth and so on. Um, interestingly enough, uh, uh, Plutarch, in talking about the ways that uh, that women have an effect on men. Uh, steers away from the you know the the carnal and the sensual. Uh, he says the greatest hold on her husband uh, that a wife has is conversation, character, and comradeship. Um, you know the the ideal wife is is one who is virtuous and who is an engaged partner uh, in the relationship. And so, you know, along these lines, there's mention of things like, uh, uh, you know, you should try to prevent them from having, you know, uh, gold embroidered shoes and bracelets and anklets and, and to wear purple and pearls. Uh, these things are distractions that will, you know, lead a woman to want to uh, engage in, in ostentation. And uh, you know that's a that's a distraction that will take away from the the balance of, of public life. This is the kind of thinking that's in the back of sumptuary laws, like the uh, the Oppian Law. Uh, the the idea that is that uh, if you know women are are uh, permitted to wear lots of ostentatious, luxurious things, then they will go out and show these things off and uh, and uh, fritter their lives away, whereas uh, if they don't have these things, they will, um, you know, they will attend to their responsibilities, which lie largely in the household. Um, and so, you know, we see here, you know, one of uh, many examples of the, you know, the, 
you know, expressions of what is ideal in the female. And once again, you know, there's a, there's a disconnect between what is the ideal and what is the, uh, what is the actual norm. But, you know, what is the ideal is something that is going to be pursued, especially in a Greek-influenced society, and especially amongst the wealthy who have a, a chance to, uh, to not be, you know, uh, weighed down by the, you know, the burdens of peasant life. Uh, the, uh, the gynecology article, this is really interesting, because... Uh, what the, the gynecology article is is looking at, uh, at gender in the ancient world in, a, in, in something that is very practical and, and concrete uh, rather than you know speculation and, and uh, you know uh, you know trying to extrapolate from drama or mythology or all these things that are sort of uh, distortions of, of you know everyday life and so you know the the, the basic idea is the uh, the School of Hippocrates is uh, uh, is dedicated to um, uh, 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 systematizing rationally the approach to medicine, and you know, and so there, there's an outgrowth of uh, of uh, uh, this is an outgrowth of of you know ancient uh, traditional folk remedies and so forth that had been passed down from generation to generation, uh, and uh, you know the the interesting thing about this then is that the gynecological uh, uh, information, the, the the gynecological uh, remedies and uh, uh, you know prescriptions and so forth that uh, that that come to be included in the 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 Hippocratic uh, study of medicine uh, also have a similar origin that uh, that they originate amongst uh, women's ideas of how to minister to themselves and so um, uh, in this way you know we see a sort of uh, you know there are parallel strains in other words of of folk remedies uh, uh, you know that uh, is the the sort of more visible line that that is uh, preserved uh, in the the main body of work and a secondary line that was kept by women amongst themselves uh, and that that uh, that is the source of the the gynecological component of the Hippocratic system, and uh, so this is one of these ways in which you can discover, even in, without the actual voice, uh, the fact that uh, women of the ancient world had voice, and that uh, you know that their that this tradition was taken just as seriously. Uh, and seen as just as necessary as the uh, as the body of tradition that uh, that dealt with other diseases. Um, the influential women article by Lefkowitz is a, is a key article, uh, as you will have noticed. It's a, it's the um, it's the jumping off point for one of the paper topics. Uh, the basic idea here is, you know, Lefkowitz, Mary Lefkowitz, is exploring a a key question, which is, you know, if you assemble, you know, the evidence that we have of, uh, in terms of of women that are are influential that express themselves both in 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 history and in literature, uh, that. Uh, uh, that you can make an argument that women only assert themselves, um, uh, and uh, and particularly in the public sphere, in the political sphere, in the political sphere, women only assert themselves on behalf of their families, uh, and in particular, you can take it even further on behalf of a male relative, and so, uh, you know, the the again. It's important to recognize that uh, this is circumscribed from the beginning. This is talking in terms of, of the political arena, and so, uh, you know, a, a a woman's actions on behalf of a male. A male is, is the is, is the male is going to be the one that is present in the political arena. Um, you know, and so you know, uh, women's uh, political activity. Um, you know, it would it would be uh, consonant with. Um, you know the the gender divide between public and private, 
that a woman would act politically on behalf of a man, uh, on behalf of a male relative. So the Lefkowitz article uh, um, is, is, is attempting to explore that question of whether this is in fact the case, whether this uh, placid assumption that we might make along these lines is in fact justified or uh, whether it tells enough of the story. Uh, and this is this is this is a good uh, a thorough article that uh, is a good example of the exploration of a of a premise through the the rational analysis of the evidence at hand. And so this is a good article to read uh, if you haven't done so already. Uh, the infanticide article is um, you know is a. Uh, is also a very concrete approach to what we do know about infanticide, which is very little. Uh, but uh, in general, you know, infanticide is widely practiced in the ancient world, or at least widely known. Uh, the general idea being that uh, that you know, at the very least, the deformed children would be left to be exposed. Um, but also, uh, there is a, a almost unknowable extent to which. Um, uh, healthy children are also exposed in a ratio that uh, would tend to be at the expense of, of female children. Um, you know, male children are you know needed uh, you know to uh, uh, as as uh, uh, you know as members of the army, as members of the government, uh, you know, as members of the assembly, as uh, practitioners of commerce and so forth, and so. Um, there is a, you know, there is a premium on the the male child, and you know, if um, resources are strained, then you know, a a male child might be kept where a female child might be not. Uh, so Pomeroy is 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 attempting to uh, nail down what we do know about this. Uh, you know, one thing to bear in mind again about infanticide is the idea that uh, you know normally the way in which this is done is not to take out a knife and kill the baby outright, uh, but rather to expose a child, you know, in in the wilderness on a hillside or whatever, uh, leaving the child to be to to die through um, the the um, through the elements. And uh, essentially, you know, placing the child in the hands of the gods, so that uh, if uh, if you know the the child's destiny is to survive, then it will be you know picked up and, and raised by you know some other person, whether you know a peasant or you know a wandering uh, uh, you know a, a you know a wandering tradesman or uh, someone who you know received a foretelling that there would be a child in this. In this location, that is uh, that needs to be saved or whatever. So, but the point is, it's um, even all the babies that are left out to be exposed don't all necessarily die. Some of them are retrieved uh, by other families. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, there there simply are you know no records of this, and it's not even something that's talked about. In literature, or uh, in in history, or you know, philosophy, or anything else, and so we're left to you know fill in uh, gaps in between you know extremely few data points. Uh, uh, one more Pomeroy article: uh, Spartan women amongst the Romans. Uh, so there's a natural sense in which the uh, you know the the Spartans are, are, are you know sort of associated with the Romans, you know they're both uh, warrior societies and and both of them, uh, you know uh, you know were uh, well as as Pomeroy puts it for the Romans the Greeks were the other, uh, you know the Roman sense of of Greekness uh, came out of uh, of Athens you know for for Athens. The Spartans, the Spartans were the other, and so there's a sort of uh, you know transitive property at work here. Uh, but uh, you know the the extent of the comparison is 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 rather limited, in the sense that uh, the Spartans were were not at all imperialistic. Once they had conquered 
uh, you know, Messini and Laconia, the lands that they actually settled in and enslaved the inhabitants, you know, they weren't interested in, in building an empire. Uh, and, uh, and Sparta was protected by the, you know, insuperable, you know, potency of their own army and the, 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 um, the honing of the, uh, the art of war and the, the breeding of the ideal warrior. Uh, whereas the, the Romans, from you know early in their history, were aggressive and expansionist, and uh, the uh, how this has to deal with women, uh, the you know the Spartan woman was unusually free for the Greek world because the 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 Spartan men lived apart. They're you know for most of their adult lives, from age seven to age thirty, uh, the the Spartan man is living in the barracks, and so uh, women are left to you know take care of things that uh, might normally be taken care of by men, even in terms of things like property. Uh, uh, this is simply not the case in the Roman world. The the, the Roman soldier is. The ordinary Roman citizen, the uh, the property holder, the the freeholder, uh, and so you know the 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 Roman you know citizen soldier, you know farms his land part of the year, uh, and uh, it goes off to war during the campaign season between the harvest and then returns, and and when he is not at war, he is uh, side by side with his wife, um, managing the uh, the responsibilities of. Of land uh, and society and family, uh, uh, and so uh, the condition of of you know of, of Spartan women and Roman women uh, are you know you know are not any more uh, you know are not any more relatable than they than the the Roman women are to you know to any other Greek society. Uh, that said, you know there's some interesting things that uh, that Pomeroy can say, but uh, you know it's not. Um, you're, you know, it's it, there's a sort of it's more about the fancy of of well, you know, so there are certain similarities between the Spartans and the Romans. How far can we take this in talking about uh, in talking about uh, gender, both in terms of the Roman male and the Spartan male, uh, who have uh, somewhat more in common, and uh, the the Roman female and the Spartan female. The uh, uh, the women of Achmonia. This is a really uh, this is a, this is a fun one. So there's a there's a dedicated steel a, a pillar the, in uh, uh, in the Hellenistic East uh, uh, from after you know the Roman dominion of that territory uh, from the times of the Emperor Augustus, and uh, most unusually, this pillar is dedicated by. Uh, the Greek and Roman women, the, the wives of this small community uh, far out on the fringes of the Roman Empire. And essentially what Thonemon says is that, uh, is that um, the, uh, the liberality of Rome was uh, was widely known throughout the Roman Empire. Rome is the you know is is the paragon of of civilization. Uh, in many ways, and uh, it had uh, transformed itself um, socially and culturally. Um, it was, uh, you know, Rome was known as a, as a as a place of of, of ferment and and, uh, um, and and progress in some ways, uh, especially economically, of course. Uh, and uh, with the advent of um, the the emperors Augustus being the first emperor and the awareness of of the prominence of, of women within the Julio Claudian family and so forth uh, there is a a a, a, a a sense throughout the Roman Empire um, a, that uh, you know that Rome is more liberal with regard to gender than it actually is because fundamentally the Romans remain. Uh, hold very closely onto a lot of traditional ideas, especially about what it is to be a Roman man, as well as what it is to be a, a matron. Uh, and so, you know, what we end up is with this uh, with this uh, steel being dedicated to by the the wives of um, uh, of this uh, of, of Achmonia because the inhabitants uh, thought 
that um, women were being allowed greater expression as, uh, in Rome and wanted to ensure that, uh, that they were keeping up with um, you know, uh, cultural progress in the great capital. And, uh, you know, it, it is, it is uh, no further examples of this are, are known. And so, you know, you, you sort of get the impression that um, they, the, the Achmanians later found out that um, they had gotten it slightly wrong. And then uh, finally, we have this article on the uh, the Greek calendar of Constantinople during the uh, during the Byzantine Empire, um, which is the the Christian calendar of saints and martyrs. And so, uh, you know, what this is what this is uh, this is attempting to analyze quantitatively uh, the you know the not only the presence of of women. Uh, which is significant. Uh, the you know uh, the the martyrs that are remembered as being important early saints in, that are commemorated on this on the these early Christian calendars in, in the in the Byzantine East. Uh, uh, not only the presence of women, but the circumstances of their martyrdom uh, and uh, you know the things that lead to their sanctification. Uh, and so, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, is, you know, comes up in this article is, is the idea that, that uh, you know, that, um, you know, martyrdom amongst women is, is often in a, in, 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 takes a violent form, um, takes a form that includes, you know, violation. Um, but uh, overall, the importance of you know the you know violence being directed toward a martyr is more or less the same across gender. And the other thing that uh, that hasn't really come up, but this is uh, there's 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 a hint of it. When we were discussing mythology, but uh, um, you know the the basic idea that you know rape is a very key concept. Uh, as in the the literary expression of the subordination of women to men, and uh, as we saw, this is one of the major themes of, of Ovid in in writing the Metamorphoses, uh, um, and uh, you know this is one of the the recurring themes of you know mythology in general as being an exaggerated uh, um, you know articulation of the of the human condition. Um, but uh, you know, there's uh, there is uh, there's an extent to which you know the kinds of of rape and violation that women are subjected to, uh, men are also subjected to, but uh, it is not talked about, and so uh, there is a, there is an invisibility of um, you know of the use of of sexual force um, in a certain category that's uh, that's. Uh, is is almost impossible to examine. So, you know, something to bear in mind if you you know if you're writing about uh, about uh, you know the uh, about rape about the um, you know the subordination of women through uh, through force or this kind of thing. Uh, you know, bear in mind that uh, we have expressions of 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 you know male and female interaction along these lines. Uh, we don't have the uh, the uh, the corresponding occurrences uh, between men. Not that they were necessarily all that um, numerous, but simply you know we don't have the accounts at all. We don't have uh, you know any prototype examples. Uh, the closest that we have is 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 Ganymede, who um, was uh, seduced by Zeus and ended up being uh, living a happy life as Zeus's cupbearer. But um, you know that's the that's the happy story that was preserved. Um, so um, as you uh, as you are uh, uh, working today on your paper, as you are making your uh, comments in the forums and so forth, um, you know try to think in terms of. Uh, of you know the 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 Hellenistic era is a culmination of many ways of 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 the entire you know ancient um, uh, world uh, uh, the the transformations that uh, to take place across the ancient era 
the Hellenistic uh, world and the, the Greco-Roman world that, uh, that rises out of it. So, you know, today's uh, topics are, you know, sort of culminations of the things that we've been thinking about and, and talking about and writing about. So, you know, see as you are, uh, you know, expressing your final thoughts in the forums, um, think about, uh, you, know, you know, what conclusions you've come to, what, uh, uh, what uh, you know, um, points of view you have accumulated uh, uh, as uh, you've uh, as you've um, uh, as you've looked into all of these uh, different societies and cultures, um, uh, what is what are your feelings about what we can understand about the nature of gender, about uh, the the sense of there being both uh, an ideal for men and an ideal for women that must be lived up to. Uh, that uh, you know there is more of a sense of a divide between. Uh, the the virginal woman and the uh, the the wife and mother on the one hand uh, compared to uh, the the male who undergoes a rite of passage into adulthood but one that is fundamentally not necessarily about virginity at all and what that says amongst other things so think about don't just think about women think about gender and think about uh, the interplay between the genders think about the standards that men and women are held up to uh, and think about uh, you know the uh, you know the the sense to which we can um, get a real understanding of of what it means to be a man or a woman uh, in the ancient world. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and participation, and uh, good luck.